In this video, I'm going to do a simple walkthrough of how to set up and run a generative design analysis in Autodesk Fusion 360. To demonstrate this, I'm going to be designing a wall mount guitar holder. To look at what we're going to do, we're going to switch from the design to the generative design workspace. The overall workflow we'll be following will start with specifying the preserved geometry, which are areas that must be included in our part and the obstacle geometry, which are areas that we want our part to avoid. Next, we will add structural loads and constraints. Then we will define the criteria our design must follow, including what our design goal is and what the manufacturing methods will be used to produce the final part. Next, we will choose the possible materials our design will be made from. And finally, we will run our simulation. So to get started, we will flip back into the design workspace. I'm going to start by modeling the wall that will be behind the guitar holder. Next, I will model the neck of the guitar and the space where the neck needs to be able to be removed from the holder. Next, I will model the tabs that will hold up the guitar. Now I'll model the mounting points for the screws. Now I'll model the screws. Now that I have all the parts modeled, I'm going to flip into the generative design workspace. So the first step is we're going to define our preserved geometry. And again, this is the geometry that we want to keep in our model. So that's going to be the tabs and the three mounting points. We'll hit OK. And now they'll turn green to show us that. Next, we'll pick our obstacle geometry. So this is going to be the wall, the screws and the access point for the screws, and the neck of the guitar. And now they've turned red. Next we'll choose constraints. Um, so in this case we're going to fix the three mounting points because they're attached to the wall. And now we're going to create structural loads. So I'm going to hide the obstacles and we're going to first choose a force on both of these faces going down 2.5 pounds. Now we can have multiple load cases and each load case is considered separately in the final design. So now I'm going to clone this load case, activate it, and we're going to change the force to being a normal force on just one of the tabs. Um, this will help with supporting um, a sideways force for when you're putting the guitar in the holder. And I'm going to clone this one now and change that load to just this face now. So now we have three different load cases and our next step is going to be choosing objectives. So in this case we want to design the lightest weight part. So I'm going to choose minimize mass and I'd like to make sure that it's at least three times as strong as it needs to be. Um, so we're going to go with a safety factor of three. Now I'm going to pick manufacturing options. So um, the first option is production volume and it'll use a cost estimation to tell you how much 
uh, each method is going to cost. So in this case, let's say I want to make 10 of them. Um, now the first option is unrestricted, and this will give you one set of parts that ignores all of the other manufacturing methods. Uh, this is really nice to see what it's going to create without any restrictions. Uh, and then now I want to have a part to be additive manufactured, so uh, 3D printed, and I want a minimum wall thickness of two millimeters. And then milling options, you have the choice of three axis, two and a half, or five. And in three axis, you can pick which directions uh, your tooling has access to. Uh, and then you choose the minimum tool diameter that you have available to you, the shoulder length, and the head diameter. Next, we can choose two axis cutting. So this would be water jet or laser cutting, um, and it'll limit it to a two dimensional profile. And finally, we have die casting as an option. And these are the available choices for that. So one thing to note is the more options you choose, the longer your study is going to take to solve. So we're going to use those as our options, select them, and now we're going to choose materials. Any material we want to be included has to be added up here. So currently, um, aluminum is chosen, and this is a 3D printable aluminum. So we have different metals. Um, these are from the additive materials library. So if you want access to the general ones, you can choose that or nonlinear here. So in this case, we'll go with uh, the aluminum that's already there, and we'll choose a plastic option as well. Uh, the next step I usually do is run the previewer, and this will give you a quick estimation of what your part's going to look like, and it'll catch any major issues that might occur. Now that this is complete, we can see it has added and removed material and avoided all the areas we told it to avoid, and has already simplified the shape quite a lot. So the last thing I'm going to do is change uh, the study settings um, and I'll usually drag the slider a little further to the fine setting so you get a little bit of a nicer model in the end. Now that that's done we're going to click generate make sure it's selected click generate And you'll see it'll progress through the different modes. So first it'll upload it, um, then it'll solve it, and then eventually it'll download all the results. Uh, now if we close this, as it's running, we'll see all the different model options pop up here one by one. So um, this will probably take a couple hours, so we'll be back when that's done. Now that this has completed, we can see all the results on the screen. Um, on the left side, we have filters. We can look at say just the unrestricted models or just additive or other things like that um, and then at the top we can look at them all in different views so we have details where it shows a little bit more about each one um, a plot where you can choose what factors you want to compare and finally a table view which shows you all this information so if you find one that you like um, you can click on it to open it and you can use the compare button to compare multiple designs side by side. You can look around to see what it's come up with. At the bottom, there's a scroll bar to show the design iterations. So if we go back, we can see how it's progressed throughout its iterations. So partway through, it was like that, and it slowly got more and more refined until the final result. So once you're happy with one of the options at the bottom, you can choose create new design from outcome. And if we click on that, uh, this will take a few minutes and we'll actually have a model that we can edit and further change. Now that the export has completed, um, we get a green checkbox up here and a little green icon at the bottom showing you which iteration you exported. You can export multiple different iterations if you'd like to. So now we'll click on Design Ready and Open Design, and this will make a separate file. 
Now that the file is open, we'll see at the bottom we have a few different features, um, one of them being an organic shape, which if we want we can right click and click on edit. And this will open up a form and we have a typical form tools um, and we can actually make changes to this and uh, move parts around and as we like. And that's it. So this model is ready to be manufactured, whether it's 3D printed or uh, machined. Hopefully this video was helpful, and if you have any suggestions for future videos, please let me know in the comments.